Hey everyone, it's me, Steph, welcoming you to a detailed tool bag tutorial series on hard surface detailing, texturing, and rendering. In this series, we'll cover baking bevels, then move on to adding detail with vector layers, create weathering with masks and carve groups, and adding decals and grime. To top it all off, I'll show you how to create and render fire effects using Toolbag's material layers and animation system. Before the first video, I'll show you how powerful materials can be when adding high poly details to your meshes using the bevel shader. The really cool twist is that the high poly was created and exported from a CAD program. So I'll be showing you how to get rounded edges on the model using the bevel shader and then use that as our baking source. Some advantages of using a bevel shader versus modeling tiny bevels along every hard edge is the ability to iterate on changes faster. With a simpler base mesh, you won't have to manage modeling stacks or revert history to make drastic changes. The speed at which you can adjust and change hundreds of meshes with one shader is a massive game changer, especially since you can bake this onto a low poly cutting a huge step right out of the pipeline. Let me show you how. First, we're going to need to export our meshes from this CAD program, Plasticity, where Laurentio Nadelka has created this amazing cargo drone from this awesome concept art by Ivan Rastrigan. Exporting from Plasticity is super simple. I can go to File, Export, and choose between STL or OBJ. For this project, I'm going to export as OBJ and import my meshes into my toolbag scene. It comes in perfectly. While this is great as is, I'll take it a step further and add some proper naming conventions for baking. Then I'll use the Bake Projects Quick Loader to automatically load my meshes into their respective low and high bake groups. So I'll throw in a new bake project and then hit quick loader to import the low and high poly meshes. If we have a look at the groups the quick loader has made, we'll notice that some of the highs will have multiple models in their folders, like this folder Spaceship Body 13. If I select a group mesh in the scene's hierarchy and press the hotkey Control F, it will quickly focus on the selected mesh in the viewport. Turning on visibility of the high poly shows that it's in two parts, but the low is just one part. Naming the high poly with an extra suffix after the high will allow you to quick load multiple high polys into the one group. Handy for situations like this. So now that we have the meshes imported, I'll hide the low so we can start adjusting the bevels. So over to the material window, I'll select the high poly material and adjust the material's metalness so my bevels will be easier to admire. To start working with bevels, go to the surface module and change its mode to bevel. Nothing should have changed in the viewport yet because bevels can only be seen when using the ray trace renderer. So I'll turn on ray trace rendering and now you should be able to see the bevels appear. If I change the bevel width on the material, you should be able to see the bevel change. I'll adjust the bevel samples to increase the quality. I'm gonna set mine to 16. Now I have a pretty decent textile density around two meters to a 4K texture, so I can tighten up the width to a number around five, which should show up nice. Now you might've noticed that the bevel is happening for all of these parts. And that's because the bevel same surface option is turned off. So if I toggle this on, now we can see that the blending bevel will go away, showing all the separated parts nicely. But let's look over here at these engine intakes. The bevel looks kind of tiny on these. I want to adjust it to be a different size. The good news is that I can set this up three different ways. The easiest way for this part is to use multiple materials since the engine parts are already separate meshes. I can then set up and apply as many different materials as I want, getting different bevel widths easily. To make it quicker for me, I'll duplicate the material I already have and then apply it to the engine intakes. Back in the material settings, I can then adjust the bevel settings to a higher width and play with the bevel angle to help round them out more. 
It's always good to shade different materials on the high poly with a unique colour. I like doing this to keep track of what material is on what mesh at a glance. A quick tip for selecting a mesh's material is by double clicking the mesh with the material window open. Doing this will select the mesh's applied material in the material window for quick navigation. The engines are at a bevel setting I like and now I can move on to showing off the other two options we can use to control bevel width. I'll zoom in on this camera sensor for the next demo as the next two steps involve painting in some vertex color data onto the model. Vertex colors can be added and then re-exported from your 3D program of choice. I happen to have applied some vert colors in my while you weren't looking. I am very sneaky. We can view the vertex colors on the mesh by changing the albedo mode in the material to vertex color. Here, the two part is set to this purple color, which is 50% red and 100% blue. The rest of the mesh is a black vertex color, which is zero data on all channels. I can enable the vertex color by just setting the vertex color mask input to red. Because I halved the red color, the amount of bevel width that will get applied will also be halved and we get some sharper looking bevels on this object. The last way you can adjust bevel width is with material layers, which will allow me to stack different material settings and then blend them together, all in the one material. Material layers can be enabled by selecting a layering model. In this case, I'm going to use the vertex color I have set up. So in the material settings, at the top, I'll select vertex color. Now the UI will allow me to start adding and editing material layers. Once I've made my material layer, I can use the already painted blue channel as a vertex color mask. You might have noticed that I also painted the body of the ship under this object, so I can set the bevel width to 2 and then enable bevel same surface. So just on this one section, I will have a continuity bevel between these two separate objects. Pretty neat, huh? Righto, now that all my bevels are set up, I can now head over to the bake settings to enable curvature, AO, and object normal in the map types. Then I'll enable UDIM in these settings. After waiting for all of these UDIM tiles to bake, I can hit the preview material button to view the final bakes on the model. If we get a closer look here, you can see that the normals as well as the AO and curvature are baked down perfectly. So good. I'm now going to show you how to set up a texture project for this bake so that we can swiftly start texturing. Select the bake project, find the texture project link option and select new project. This will create a UDIM texture project and automatically populate the input maps by importing all the maps made by the bake project. I need to keep things organized, so I'll save out a second scene to work in. First, I need to save the current scene. After that, I can use the save as function to save as my new texturing scene. Now that I have a secure new scene, I'll import the low into the scene and then delete the bake project. If I need to rebake for any reason, I can just go back to the previous scene and rebake. Oh, and using the clear unused materials function up here in the materials menu will remove all the old high poly materials, making this scene all shiny and clean. Now I can save and have this ready to start texturing in our next video. Well, that wraps up the first video of our series. So make sure you do the YouTube updoot and subdoot so you can come back when we take these fake textures into a texture project to start adding high poly details using vector layers. Cheerio friends!